Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to interpret an infrared spectrum for an organic compound. You should then be able to describe how the absorption of infrared by greenhouse gases leads to global warming. And finally, you should be able to describe the practical applications of infrared spectroscopy. Now a key idea you need to understand about any organic compound is that the bonds are constantly vibrating. There are several different types of vibration, but two of the main ones are stretching and bending. Stronger bonds vibrate faster than weaker bonds. And if the bond is between two heavy atoms, then the vibration will be slower than if the bond is between two lighter atoms. Now these vibrating bonds can absorb radiation which has the same frequency as the bond vibration. For organic molecules, this radiation lies in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. When the bonds absorb radiation, the degree of stretching or bending increases. So if we pass infrared radiation through a sample of our organic molecule, then the bonds will absorb specific frequencies, and we can produce an absorption spectrum such as the one I'm showing you here. This is the simplified infrared absorption spectrum for ethanol. The percent transmittance is shown on the y-axis. This tells us how much infrared radiation passes through the sample. A peak, such as shown by the blue arrow, shows us that infrared radiation has been absorbed. Now, rather than displaying frequency, the x-axis shows the wave number. Wave number is the number of wavelengths per centimetre. Now, there are a couple of key points about infrared spectra that you need to be aware of. Firstly, Below around 1,500 centimetres to the minus 1, we have the fingerprint region. The fingerprint region is a complex series of peaks, which are specific to the molecule being studied. Because of its complexity, the fingerprint region is often analysed by a computer. Secondly, organic compounds tend to have a peak around 3,000 centimetres to the minus 1. This is caused by vibration of carbon to hydrogen bonds. Be aware though that sometimes this peak can be partially obscured by nearby peaks. Ok, now there are three other very characteristic peaks which you need to know for A-level chemistry. And I should point out that you are given wave number values for functional groups in the exam. Firstly, in alcohols, vibration of the oxygen to hydrogen bond in the OH group gives us a peak between 3200 to 3600 centimetres to the minus 1. Vibration of the carbon to oxygen bond in the OH group can also cause a peak between 1000 to 1300 centimetres to the minus 1. However, because this peak is in the fingerprint region, it can be difficult to see. Now aldehydes and ketones contain the carbonyl group. Here's this simplified IR spectrum for the aldehyde ethanol. Vibration of the carbon to oxygen double bond in the carbonyl group produces a peak between 1630 and 1820 centimetres to the minus 1, although typically this peak centres near 1700 centimetres to the minus 1. So this peak can indicate the presence of an aldehyde or ketone. Now carboxylic acids also contain the carbonyl group. Here's a simplified IR spectrum for ethanoic acid, which is a carboxylic acid. The peak around 1700 cm to the minus 1 indicates the presence of the carbonyl group. However, carboxylic acids also have an oxygen to hydrogen bond in the OH group. This produces a very broad absorption peak within the range 2500 to 3300 cm to the minus 1. So the combination of these two peaks shows the presence of a carboxylic acid. The carbon to oxygen single bond can also produce a peak between 1000 and 1300 centimetres to the minus 1. However, because this peak is in the fingerprint region, it may not be easy to pinpoint. Now the absence of a peak can be a useful way to rule out certain compounds. For example, the absence of the carbonyl peak around 1700 centimetres to the minus 1 shows that a compound cannot be an aldehyde, ketone or carboxylic acid. Ok, so as we've seen, vibrating covalent bonds can absorb infrared energy, and this process takes place with the gases in the atmosphere. The sun emits infrared and ultraviolet radiation. 
However, these can pass through the atmosphere and are absorbed by the Earth's surface. The surface of the Earth now re-emits the radiation as infrared with a longer wavelength. This infrared has the same frequency as the vibrational frequency of the bonds in greenhouse gases. This includes water vapour, methane and carbon dioxide. The vibrating bonds absorb the infrared energy and then re-emit this into the atmosphere. And this causes the temperature of the atmosphere to increase near the surface of the Earth. Now the combustion of fossil fuels is increasing the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and this is leading to global warming. This is why there's a growing effort to decarbonise human activities. Now infrared spectroscopy has several practical applications. For example, it can be used to monitor air pollution such as carbon monoxide or nitrogen oxide from car exhausts. It can also be used in breathalysers to check the level of alcohol in the breath. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe infrared spectroscopy.